This video's goal is to guarantee that you walk away knowing how to solo flawless the Ghosts of the Deep Dungeon to get this pretty new emblem and some pretty impressive bragging rights. To do that, I am bringing you loadouts that make you invincible, strategies that will have you zooming through the encounters, even the jumping puzzles, and most importantly, DPS methods that will have you killing both bosses in four to five phases each. And no, these aren't some ridiculously hard DPS methods that require you to have perfect aim or a fast menu loading, loadout swapping PC, but rather easy to pull off strategies that absolutely anyone can do. And considering that I was five phasing at 1815 power, you folks out there in the 1820s could be four phasing these bosses in your sleep. So here's the plan. First, we'll go over the core subclass loadout that we'll be using for the entire dungeon, artifact mods included. Then after that, we'll touch on each encounter individually with weapon and mod loadout recommendations for each specific encounter as we go. Then finally, I'll talk you through one to two phases of each encounter, outlining exactly how you want to play them, dangerous things to look out for, how to maximize damage and efficiency, and literally anything else you could possibly need to know to solo flawless this dungeon. So please consider subscribing if that all sounds good and well, and let's begin. The premier hunter build for this solo flawless dungeon is the world-class Arc Assassin's Kyle Hunter build that over 600,000 of you have already seen. We've got Gambler's Dodge and Combination Blow to create arguably the strongest symbiotic relationship in all of Destiny. Add Assassin's Kyle into the mix, and you're going invisible and fully healing on every melee kill. For Aspects, it's the usual lethal current to jolt targets and create a damaging aftershock on every post-dodge punch, stackable with 1-2 punch shotguns by the way, and Flow State to not only make you amplified when defeating those jolted targets, but to also allow amplification to increase your weapon reload speed, which is huge for DPS. And speaking of DPS, we've got the usual Pulse Grenade and Gathering Storm Super to make these 4-5 to five boss phase kills super easy. Rounding out with fragments, it's feedback for bonus melee damage when hit, resistance for bonus durability, shock for more damage on our grenades through jolt, and magnitude for longer lasting grenades. On the artifact, I'd urge you towards seasonal arc mods like authorized arc and melee mods, electric armor, thunderous retort, amped up, and if unlike me you're actually high enough on the artifact to unlock them, shock and awe, and lightning strikes twice. Now while that is your loadout for the entire dungeon, your weapons and mods will vary as we go. For encounter number one, I'm recommending a one-two punch shock gun and an eager edge sword, with weapon number three not really mattering too much at all. As for armor mods, it doesn't matter too much for this encounter. This is the build I went with, so feel free to just copy it and head off to the races. Now that you're all set up, let's walk through everything you need to know about this encounter. So obviously, just looking for the ogre, get the combination blow stacking, we see our path. And I'm going to get a, another stack of combination blows for red types too, so that when we get to this pack of enemies. Obviously, remember the symbol, so hamburger. Um, I like to say the symbol out loud at least once. It just helps me remember it a little bit more easily. So, if, you know, definitely recommend that if that's helpful to you. Get our combination blow times three, and then we're just continuing to follow the path. As you do these a lot as well, the paths are kind of static. So you'll be able to kind of tell exactly where you're going for each thing as you do this a little more and you kind of learn the routes. There's only like four or five possible routes, so it becomes pretty easy. So like I automatically know this one goes over here to the beach and this is where the knight is going to spawn. Once again, hamburger. So we're going to do a quick dodge to maintain the combination blow. This loop is obviously just dodge, punch, dodge, punch, dodge, punch, and over and over again. Also worth noting, if your Lethal Current Aftershock gets the kill on the enemy, it will not consume your melee and not stack your Combination Blow, so you'll just have to punch more stuff if that does happen. So we've got that Vestige, we'll hop on the Sparrow again, and then following the dirt roads pretty much always takes you back, so if you ever kind of get lost, just follow the dirt road and you'll be good. I want to maintain our Combination Blow, so we are at one second, put room right there, back times three. Kill the Wizard right away, hit Reveal, and then we're just looking for Hamburger. Nope, nope, nope. Make sure you remember too, because if you dunk in the wrong one, you instantly die. And that's true for every encounter in this dungeon, so. Yeah, just try to do your best to remember. And then we have to wait for the deep site to expire before the next ogre spawns, so you'll potentially be sitting here for a little bit until you see an illusion weakens down in the chat. 
once you see an illusion, we can sign the chat. That's me you know the next ogre's up. My e red sword took me completely the wrong way. Okay. And then so that guy's completely blocking us with the shield. So taking this path, I see the symbol up in the air right there. It's cone. So saying it out loud right now, just so I remember. And going fast is really nice too, because then you keep your combination blow times three. And uh, you'll get through these packs of enemies way more quickly. He's dead. And then, like I said, the more you do these, the more you'll remember the path. So I automatically know it goes over here. Lava grenade at one of the packs of wizards. And then punch the rest. Can't see anything right now, though. And then I'm going to go kill that acolyte just so I maintain my combination blow stacks. But then I know this path goes inside up here, and then I know this is where the Hive Guardian is as well. So hit the dodge. Always want to have your eyes on the lower left side of your screen as well to see whether your dodge or your combination blow is up. So you know that if you if you can just run in and punch someone straight away, or if you have to do a quick dodge. And I'm just... Unfortunately, I didn't dodge next to an enemy. I will not get a refund uh, for my melee there. But the nice thing is, even if that happens, your dodge will come back up by the time... Like, your dodge will come back up before you lose your combination blow stack. So it's actually not that big of a deal. I can't wait to hear the YouTube comments that are like, oh my god, you call this symbol pointy X or whatever? Because everyone always has different callouts for the symbols. Okay, so we had pointy X. So we'll just kill the wizard. I don't really care about the other enemies unless I need to stack combination blow. If I already have combination blow times three, I just don't really worry about the other adds because what's going to waste a lot of your time, not only in this encounter, but in all the encounters is focusing too much on just like clearing adds as opposed to actually doing whatever mechanic you need to be doing. I'm trying to get over there before my combination blow expires and I should be fine. Yep. So your combination blow, actually it says 19 seconds, but it lasts 20 seconds because when it gets to z it doesn't go away when it hits zero. Well, like zero is like the last second. So punch, punch, punch. And then we're looking for a line table, which is right here. And then we're all done. Now, this first jumping puzzle is a bit long and a bit dangerous. So let me show you how to zoom through it with safety and ease. Now for this part, I recommend switch. You don't have to, but I like switching to Void Hunter for this part. Um, just because then I can go invisible for some of the ad sections and just run right past them. Obviously, you can do that same thing by having Arc Assassin's Cowl on and killing a dude, but I just like the more on-demand invis cooldowns. It makes it a little easier. So, but it's entirely up to you. Mods don't really matter that much, but Bolt of Sparrow. When I fall down here, I like to stick to the far right side because there's less stuff that you can get hit by. And then we'll rotate around here. Pop on the grate, and then Eager Edge Sword is really nice for this because you get through a lot more quickly. And then here. I know Bungie said that fall damage doesn't like exist anymore. Or at least if you had like a flat service. It's or not not that it doesn't exist, but it's impossible to like die if you fall into a flat service. Listen, if if you want to test that theory, go ahead. On a solo flawless run, I'm I'm gonna do what I've always I've played Destiny for ten years. That, my my brain says when you do a lar long fall, you jump. In a solo flawless run, I'm not I'm not gonna I'm not gonna change what my brain has always said to do. And then I'm gonna show you the fastest way to get through this part as well because this part's kind of a pain. And that goes away straight down. And so right here, I look for these like little cables that make the V, and I always stay right in between them. That's usually the fastest way to get down and then same thing here so i fall down here i see those two cables make the little v fall right in between them because you can come into contact with those cables then when i hit the water we immediately i go straight for the door i hit this first bubble and then i take the ramp up and i fall straight down you can get any of these bubbles by do like a 180 as i'm falling and then I drift over here to the right side as I'm falling off and I fall straight down. I skip that first balcony right there or scout, whatever you want to call it. Skip that whole section right there and the second balcony, this is what I land on. And there will be a bubble right here in the middle, dead center. And you land right next to the fan. Be careful here as well because you can fall through those holes and then you're screwed. So 
and then I eager red sword right out. That was weird. Fall straight down here. And then find the little exits. There's a bubble right over here to your right that I like to grab. And then I hug this right side, this one. And then once again, I look for the cables. Go right in between the sets of cables. Get a few bubbles. And then down here, you want to look for the red light. That's your exit path. And I like to grab this bubble right before it. So to the left, the red light is where you go. Then you go ahead and sneak off the edge. Get whatever bubble you want. And then you're at the next fan. And you make your way up. And you're good. Also worth noting that you carry whatever momentum you have going into the water, you carry that momentum for a little bit on like right when you submerge. So if you have like a, if you have a place where you can like eager edge sword into the water, do so because you'll carry that momentum and you'll move a little bit faster. So I skipped those bubbles right there. I still have like a quarter of my pressure resistance and I'm perfectly fine. And then here is where I eager edge sword. Honestly, don't even need invis because these guys don't really hurt that much. But like here is where you would invis if you wanted to. I guess I might as well. Like here's so here I like to go look to the left. Eager edge to get a little momentum. Grab that bubble. Hop. And you know, obviously, if, you know, do do this path whatever way you're comfortable with and then I skip that bubble I don't need it I just go straight for the exit and then here we're gonna have some more ads that once again you just get past with invis and then back of the map over here to the right another eager edge just using the sword to get past everything and then we'll have a little dodge to get our invis back up here, eager edge this little rock, and I hit a dive, and then be very careful hopping down here, and then uh, just jump across, because the sword will track to the wizards, <laughs> on occasion, it would seem, so dodge past those guys, more invis, and then at this point you're probably thinking, surely I'm almost at the boss, right? Nope. This is the longest intermission section in Destiny history. I don't know if you can go all the way to this platform. Uh, that seems uh, like, I mean, I made it, but it seems a little risky. I wouldn't go for that jump. I just, I'd go for the platform in between. So maybe don't do as I did there. Do as I say instead. So anyway, heading up. And this is where I really like the invis. So we'll wander out here. We'll have an Acolyte spawn right in front of us. Get a little Invis cooldown. A little Mantle, hop up to the next Acolyte. And then we're just hopping up on these platforms. We're just gonna do another smoke, because I don't really feel like fighting any of these guys, because I'm on a solo flawless, so why would I waste time fighting enemies that I don't actually have to fight? Another smoke. And then we'll dodge next to these guys to refund our cool, uh, or refund our invisibility and refund the smoke bomb. Although I don't think I'll need to use another smoke bomb here. And then up we go. Up we go again. And then for this section, the wall of many holes, it's the fourth one from the top. So one, two, three, four. And then I try to land at the top to reset my jumps. That way I can like, because you take a little, take a lot of damage if you, um, if you just fall straight down on that thing. So we'll go up there to the right. Through this hole. Then we'll have some water again. There's so many underwater sections in this. But on the bright side, we are now at the next encounter. 
So I just kind of pretend like this guy doesn't really exist. You have to be careful about getting hit by him, though. I mean, you should probably go around. That was probably a little dumb. But him hitting you uh, doesn't do any damage to you, but it takes away about like half of your underwater breathing meter. So that's what you have to be careful about when getting hit by him. At the first boss of the dungeon, our loadout starts to really matter. Here, I once again recommend a one-two punch shotgun with your other top slot weapon not mattering too much at all. Personally, I just ran two one-two punch shotguns, but you can make something else in there if you want, as long as it's a special weapon. Reason being is that in Destiny, if you are rocking a double special loadout, for whatever reason, heavy ammo drops are significantly increased while holding a special weapon, with the reverse being true for special ammo drops while holding a heavy weapon, even if you don't get kills with that specific weapon. Since we are killing literally everything with our fists, typically with our shotgun in our hand, this means that we will have absolutely unlimited heavy ammo to fuel our DPS weapon of choice for this boss, the Lament. Why the Lament? Well, not only does it do incredible damage to Ekthar, but it's also incredibly safe due to its healing on charged hits, making you practically immune during DPS phases. I tested a lot of other stuff, like Liar's Handshake with Tractor Cannon, Legend of Acrius, starting with Arbalist and swapping to Lament, and lots more. But ultimately, those provided at most a minimal increase to DPS while significantly increasing danger, complication, and complexity. Meanwhile, Lament is simple as heck. As for max DPS and healing, all you have to do is the following combo. Two charged light attacks, one charged heavy attack, two regular light attacks, and repeat. For mods, you'll be maintaining that same mod setup from the first encounter while making sure to install two copies of Solar Weapon Surge on the boots to boost your lament damage by 17%, and a copy of Lucent Blades on your chest for better heavy sword charge rate. With all that ready to go, here is everything you need to know to tackle Ekthar in four to five phases. We're gonna start off by just meleeing this guy so we get our first stack of combination blow that guy to get our second stack of combination blow and this is why i love arc assassin's call hunter for this we'll get our third stack of combination blow off that guy and once we have three stacks of combination blow with our one two punch shotgun let's just walk up to the knight shotgun punch kill that guy to reset our combination blow because the lethal current aftershock is what kills the knight so if you look at my melee it doesn't actually reset my combination blow timer or consume my combination blow charge which is why we have to kill another enemy but the aftershock is always going to kill the enemy. Boom. All three of the Blister Knights are dead. The Ogre is dead. So now we're already ready to go underwater. You can get through that like 10, 15 seconds every single phase. Then we come here for the reveal. Circle, pointy X, dot table. So for the pointy X, I always like to come over to this left side one. Because these are both the X's. There's dot X and then pointy X over here. So we'll hit that, and then I'm gonna go ahead and maneuver my way over. And we're gonna go for circle and dot table, which are right next to each other. So this was circle right here, and this is dot table right here. And then we're done, we get to go back to the surface. When we go back to the surface, we're gonna look to our left, and we're actually gonna kind of turn around 180 degrees, run towards the staircase, because we're gonna have some thrall that are up that typically gravitate towards the staircase. The main reason we want to do that is because the rolls we can hit with our punch. Just one punch no matter what. So that lets us stack our combination blow back up really quickly. Then once we're back at times three, it's just a matter of using our one-two punch shotgun to kill the wizard. Now once again, the aftershock is what's going to be that kills the wizard, so it's not going to reset our combination blow timer, and it's not going to consume our melee. So after we finish the ghost, still my melee charge up. So we'll want to re-melee something to go invisible. All that good stuff. And then there's our third. I don't worry about killing too many of the adds because it seems that they spawn infinitely. I don't know if the adds stop spawning at a certain point. I think they stop spawning once you get to DPS phase, but I don't worry too much about all that. But now that we have all three vestiges, we can go ahead and dunk them in all the areas. I do like to kill enemies here and there though, especially right before I dunk the third one and then hit a dodge because I'll consume the orb that I made from that enemy, which will refresh my armor charge stacks to make sure I'm at three. After we do that, we're gonna go over here, 
punch that guy, the aftershock will kill him. We're gonna immediately throw our gathering storm at the boss. One, two, heavy, two, regular. One, two, heavy, regular. Block, one, two, heavy, regular. And rinse and repeat. And this is gonna heal you to pretty much max. So you're never ever in danger. And I would say it's gonna set you up for probably, if your lament swings are on point, and none of them are really missing on the boss, which sometimes that's just kind of out of your control, not what you can do about it. You're probably going to be set up for pretty easy four phase, but otherwise it'll be a five phase, which like, what's one extra phase really when you're getting through the phases this quickly? Um, also, right after DPS phase is over, I like to run to an Acolyte, give him a quick punch so that I go invisible and get my combination blow stacking, and we get back to business. So right here, one, two, punch. Oops, melee tracked the wrong guy. And then we'll go over and get the last one. But yeah, this is a very easy five phase, as you can see by the health bar. It's, I mean, without question. It'll be a very simple five phase, and if DPS is a little better, you could probably even set yourself up for a four phase. So, back underwater. We have dot X line table and hamburger so once again i like to start with the x's because the x's are the furthest away from the exit point so there's dot x and then we had hamburger which is right over here and then line table is closest to the exit point it's like to the right of it a little bit so we're going to make our way over there and I highly recommend studying these symbols. I can put a chart uh, in the description of the video, or you can just come in here with the fire team or come in here by yourself and just wander around underwater for a little bit and get, you know, get a feel for what the layout is down there and all that good stuff. Otherwise you'll be spending probably a little more time than you want to be spending down there. So we have our combination blow stacked back up. We're gonna find that first wizard. One, two, punch. Dead, but died to our lethal current aftershock, so we'll need to go ahead and kill another enemy to reset our combination blow timer and re obtain our invis and re obtain our dodge so we can dodge for the next lethal current for the next wizard. And keep it going. I also like to kill some of the thrall, um, just because I don't like the thrall bugging me. The thrall spawn with the Wizards, so they do not spawn infinitely. They just spawn when you interact with the correct rune. So I like killing the Thrall just so they're not bugging me during DPS phase. Not that I'm super worried about dying during DPS phase, but it's just nice not to worry about them. So we'll run around. And I'm okay with my timers right now. And then once again, we're going to slide into this guy. Once you punch, the lethal current aftershock will kill him. Maybe I didn't, maybe my lethal current timer had ran out. I don't exactly know, but we're okay either way. Like I said, we, we have a lot of wiggle room because in most circumstances, this is probably going to be a five phase. So, but it's going to be a very easy five phase. So right here, one, two, light, block, one, two, heavy attack. One, two, lights, block, one, two, heavy attack, just rinsing and repeating that. And I'm also keeping an eye on my lament, lament ammo. If you have max lament ammo, it'll pretty much last you the entire DPS phase perfectly. But if for some reason you're like way faster at me than lament, I guess, maybe I'm just bad at the combo. Um, keep an eye on your ammo. If you run out of ammo, then that's probably your cue to start running around the arena and leaving the boss and just saying, okay, I'm out of lament ammo, can't heal myself with the sword anymore, let's go get the combination blow stack and get ready to do the next phase. So we're just continuing to roll around, doing everything, making the hive wish they never left home. We got the ogre back up. I guess he's dead, of course, it's back on the water. Also, fun fact, um, any, so Assassin's Cal makes you invisible and fully heals you on any powered melee kill. If you have the combination blow buff, if you look at my melee, even if you don't have a charged melee, if you have the combination blow buff, it still counts as a powered melee. So you don't even necessarily have to dodge in between each one. I just do it for the lethal current aftershock. But you can sit here and punch guys and continuously go into Zelda. 
It's only necessary to dodge in between each one when you're killing tankier enemies and you need the lethal current aftershock after each one. I'm pretty sure it's this one. Yeah. That's actually dot table, sorry. And he hit me and my pressure is bad and I don't really see a bubble. So I'm just gonna hop out to recatch my breath and then I'll hop back down, which is totally a viable option if you're ever panicking. An alternative option to grabbing a bubble if you don't see one is just resurfacing. It will also kind of reset the boss's aggro as well, so he kind of loses track of you. You could probably go a third solar weapon surge, so you'd have a 22% buff instead of a 17. That might be enough to get you over to the fourth phase hump. And there's some other options too. Um, I tested a lot of stuff when trying this. I tried Liars and Tractor Cannon. I tried, you know, swapping in Arbalist to get a shot off before swapping to another weapon to strip the shield in one shot. Um, all of those were about in the four to five phase territory as well. However, they were significantly more complicated. So that's why I like this one because it's four and five phases, but unlike the other methods, it's easy, it's safe. Um, you really are at no risk of dying whatsoever. And it's, it's, it's really easy to pull off no matter what level of player you are. And just like that, he's dead. Make sure you finish his ghost. Last thing you want is to have to do an extra phase on them. So definitely make sure you finish the ghost. Now, here is how I recommend you safely and quickly make your way from Ekthar to Oryx in just a matter of minutes. If I'm looking at the chest, I look straight to my right, look at the hole, hop down the hole, and then right in front of me is the path to the next encounter. I don't have to get a bubble or anything. Don't even hit half on my pressure resistance. That way you're not wandering around trying to figure out where the next area is. And then through here, I skip that first bubble to my right. I just go straight for the second one because you don't really need both. But yeah, if you don't finish the ghost, the boss comes back with about 10 to 15% HP, which, and the boss will still actually be damageable. So I guess theoretically you could re-kill them in that same DPS phase, but more likely than not, you're gonna have to do another DPS phase and that's just, that's not good. So here, make sure you go in Viz because as you round the corner and have some friends, and then I'm gonna use a dive because I accidentally burned both of my jumps and I don't want to die to fall damage. I, I know, allegedly, you can't die to fall damage anymore, but I'm, you know, I, I like to play things safe. Just being safe. And then here, big wide open arena. We're gonna skip past all of it. I don't wanna fight any of these guys at all. So we're just gonna hit a little dive. And then we're gonna jump through this wall, land on this little pillar. Hop over here, jump over to these acolytes, hit a dodge to get our smoke back and to refresh our invis. And then here, do a little egret sword, then we'll dive. And then we don't have to kill any of these enemies. Because, you know, if you can save time, why not? And then here I like to land on this little pillar Reset my jumps, make sure I don't take a lot of fall damage. And now it's boss time. The reason you probably clicked on this guide in the first place, which by the way, if it's been helpful so far, I'd appreciate it a lot if you'd consider subscribing to the channel and liking the video. For this boss, I did a lot of testing with different loadouts, including Leviathan's Breath, Linears, Xenophage, and a whole lot more. But what I found to be by far the most effective and easiest to pull off was Arbalist, the one-two punch shotgun, and a tracking rocket launcher. Adaptive frame rockets are by far the best since they have a 10% damage bonus thanks to their frame. So if you have a hothead with tracking explosive light or the newly refreshed Apex Predator with tracking bait and switch, it's time to bring them out. But even if you don't have either of those, the ascendancy from the tower kiosk has built in tracking and explosive light. And while its frame will have it doing less damage than the previously mentioned rockets, it'll get you through just fine. The reason I love this loadout is because the Arbalist up top allows you to one shot the boss's overshield, meaning that every single point of damage from your super and rockets goes straight into her health bar, which is actually a big deal considering that her overshield can soak up to 600,000 damage, I'm told. So being able to strip that with one Arbalist shot is pretty major. Additionally, with rockets being your damage source, you don't have to take your time to aim for the head at all like you must with other options like Leviathan's Breath. 
Instead, you can simply aim anywhere at her to lock on, fire away, and then reposition as you fire off more rockets. You might think this is dangerous with the thrall alive during the DPS phase, potentially getting in front of you and causing some self-inflicted wipes, but by constantly roaming and hopping before each rocket, it's actually the safest form of DPS I've found. As for mods, you want double surges, an elemental loader, and an elemental scavenger, all matching the element of your rocket. As for the rest, simply copy what's on screen. Now, there are still so many more tips and tricks I have for you to get through this boss super quickly and super safely. So let's dive into a few phases to talk about every single thing you need to keep in mind to finish off this solo flawless run. So we start this by crushing the ghost. Something I want to note here, uh, or real quick actually, I like to run over here to the right side to start my combination blow because there's always a pack of acolytes that spawn over here. Just punch, punch, and then we go invis and then I like to run away from those moths. And then we start stacking up the combination blow. So I'm gonna run over here, hit this guy with two punches. Um, times two, and now we're at times three. I always love to start phases by killing these boomer knights. There's a boomer knight over here on the right side. There's a boomer knight up at the top, and then there's a boomer knight over there. You can't really see him, but he hangs out over there. These boomer knights, unlike the rest of the odds in the arena, they never respawn. So once you kill them for the phase, you're done with them for the phase. So I kind of like starting each phase, killing them. Um, or you could leave them up and kill them as you path to each of the Hive Guardians after you've revealed all the symbols. Up to you either way. Um, you probably know that when you're connecting the symbols and whatnot, the chest or the heart is always going to be one of them. What I didn't know before is that you never want to do the chest first because if you do the chest first, then you end up having to redo the chest at the same time in the phase for a total of killing four Vorlogs. Whereas if you do a different one first, you'll get the symbols immediately and you'll only have to do three total symbols. So that's up to you. Um, but I would recommend obviously always doing not chest first because save yourself the time, why not? So we'll line up, connect those. And then, then you can you can do chest second if you want to, or you can do it third. As long as you don't do it first, you're good to go. So I'll probably just do it second here. Go ahead and one-two punch him. Come back over here to line him up, and then we're good to go. Now, the head can be a little tough to kill Vorlog from. Um, another thing that might not be common knowledge, I guess it depends who you are, right? Um, only you have to be in the circle while you kill Vorlog. Vorlog does not have to be in the circle. So what we can do is, the head, it's kind of tough to get him up there sometimes. Um, and even in other regions as well. You can come to the head, and then you can pull out the Arvalist and just shoot him. It looks like he's actually behaving this time, but theoretically, let's say he wasn't running up to us. Pull out the Arvalist, you can easily just tag him with a few shots there. Or, look at how much heavy we already have. One, two, three, four, five bricks in sight. Six. You can just shoot a rocket at Vorlog. You have so much heavy with this build because um, you're running double special. You can just use rockets on enemies. It's perfectly fine. So we'll link that up. And then I'm not really caring about the symbols. I'm not looking. It doesn't matter to me because I don't have to memorize those symbols. I just have to memorize these ones here. And remember when I said if you have momentum going into water, you carry it through. When you have the amplified buff and you have the speed booster buff from sprinting, that comes in really big uh, because you can get through. I mean, it's not, it's not like anyone's dying in those waterways, I guess, but it's just nice to get through more quickly. So we'll go ahead and kill all these guys. Get our combination blow times three. Make sure you take note of the symbol. So we have dot table right there. And then just like the other champions, or hive guardians rather, one two punch shotgun plus melee plus the current aftershock with combination blow times three. One shots them super easily. So we're gonna come out here, make sure we maintain our combination blow, maintain our inv invisibility. Sorry, talking's hard. Um, and then at this dot table, of course, I'm not going to worry too much about the other adds. I'm just punching them to make sure I maintain my invisibility. You can do these enemies in whatever order you want. I always go Knight, Wizard, Acolyte, but totally up to you. But we're going to go over here, stall my combination blow, which is really nice. So since I have combination blow times three, I don't really care about the other Acolytes. So I'm just going to kill the wizard. And the symbol despawns when you crush the ghost. So if you kill the enemy, if you kill the wizard, uh, the Hive Guardian, and like 
every single time make, make a mental note to always ask yourself oh what is the symbol before you crush the ghost or try to make a mental note to look at the symbol before you crush the ghost like make sure you know make a rule in your head and say i am only allowed to crush the ghost if i'm looking at the symbol while i do it and then that'll guarantee that you never miss what the symbol is because if you dunk it at the wrong one it instantly kills you and if the vestige runs out like the timer on it currently at 30 seconds you also die so both are obviously not very favorable so yeah so we're gonna go over here solve combination blow five four so just reset combination blow then i don't care about the rest of them as long as my combination blows at times three we just gonna go straight for the enemy look at the symbol we got cone look at it while i crush the ghost and then i'll get another kill so i have resacked my combination blow on my way out kind of getting tripped up by all this stuff when you come back into this main arena you want to do a little bit of ad clear but primarily on the acolytes you actually want to leave some crawl up one so that you can punch them during the dps phase i know it seems counterintuitive because using a rocket but it won't be too much of a concern because you'll be jumping a lot and you have your tracking module so it's you can get out of the way of the thrall but the main reason you want to keep the thrall alive is someone you can punch them to get a quick health refund from assassin's cow combination bluff and two so you can reproc amplified and maintain your reload speed buff so here we're going to instantly start instantly shoot her with an arbola shot that instantly pops the shield and then we're just going to kind of jump around the arena we have thrall on me but shouldn't be a big problem and we're just kind of hopping around being making sure we're aware of our surroundings and another thing we want to make sure we're aware of because you're going to be able to get off more than seven rockets in this phase, be aware of where heavy bricks are in the arena. So you can re-scavenge heavy, which you'll have a ton of on the ground from just general ad clear. You're going to be able to get in a lot of rockets. And honestly, the further away you are from the boss, kind of the better, because it gives more time for the rocket to line up. So, yeah. DPS right there. I would say that's probably a very comfortable five phase if you can continue to have solid phases. Now, obviously, in a solo flawless run, things aren't going to always go perfectly. So, you know, you might be in line for a six phase, maybe even a seven, honestly. But to me, the big win with this loadout is they are very safe phases. I know that sounds like not a real thing when you're using a rocket, but you're really never in a position where you're gonna die assuming that you're you know always moving and you're hopping so that you don't rock the crawl um making sure you're aware of your surroundings you don't have to wor worry about hitting any crits um so your aim is completely irrelevant meaning that you know the wizard teleporting around and flinching and staggering and stuff like that doesn't really matter whatsoever okay oh, yeah, these are very safe dps phases so yeah you could probably kill her a little bit faster with a different weapon potentially if you did every single DPS phase perfectly and you hit every single crit on the head. But to me, it's just so much safer to not really have to worry about aiming, to always be mobile and to never be in a position where you're getting low on HP, never be in a position where you have to hold still to line up a shot. I just, I feel like this method is the safest method. Um, and for me, when it comes to solo flawless dungeons, the safest method is always the best method. So I'm sure there's better DPS loadout options out there, but... I feel like this one is really ironclad. The one issue with this build is you can't really kill the moths. With like, you don't really have a weapon to kill the moths. Typically it's not an issue though, because the moths will always go to enemies. And when you do your dodge punch and you have jolt and your lethal current aftershock going off and stuff like that, it'll automatically blow up all the moths. On the rare occasion, if there's no enemies up, the moths will go for you. Um, so that's something you need to watch out for, but they show a grenade icon on your screen, so you always know that they're coming. It's not typically a huge deal. So we're just going to bait Vorlog back over here. Super easy. And again, we can kill him with our Arbalist. We can kill him with a rocket from far away. We can bait him into us. We can kill him with our Shoddy. It, it doesn't matter too much. Line up that symbol. And then we're going to want to punch this Acolyte to refresh our combination blow stacks. And then Chesp is our final one. So we're going to come on over here. 
So like right here, he has a ton of moss on him. But it doesn't really matter because we go invis when we punch him. And, and we're out of our combination blow now, but every area has some acolytes that are basically just cannon fodder for our combination blow stacking. So typically it doesn't end up being a huge deal. Boom, we're already back up to times three right now. And then we have hamburger for our symbol. Remember, always remind yourself of the symbol. And I noticed something too, when you're invisible, the Hive Guardians don't tend to go in their super forms, which is really, really nice, especially for the Night Guardian with the ricochet and shield throws that seem to have aimbot. And then, like I said, follow the rule of always looking at the symbol when you press the ghost. It'll do you good so you never forget what the symbol is. Also, in the middle of phases, make sure your guns are reloaded, especially your rocket. Because if you blow all your rockets in a DPS phase and then you switch to your Arbalist for the rest of the DPS phase, I uh, definitely don't want to go into the next DPS phase and start it off by having to reload your rocket. Don't really care that you're your super, you'll still one hit you. And then we'll refresh it on our way over so that we have max stacks. That was pointy X as well. So now we're going to clear out some of the Acolytes. Like I said before, we want a ton of Thrall up, but we don't really want a bunch of Acolytes up. We don't want a, a bunch of range damage hitting us. Some of the Thrall will die in the process just because we're Jolts and that's okay. Now we're going to grab our deep sight. Make sure you're not spending too much time clearing the adds. Don't want your vestige to run out because then you instantly wipe. And then we're back over here. So view, instantly hit with Arbalist. That one shots the shield. You can try and hit a grenade as well. And then we're in between our reloads. We're looking for heavy bricks on the ground. And we're kind of making our pathing based on where the heavy bricks are. So that we're going ahead and picking up heavy as our DPS phase is going, so we can make sure we get the most out of this DPS phase. Making sure to jump when we shoot our rockets. And looking at my radar, looks like we're out of thrall, so we can actually stay stationary now for a little bit. But we do need to go find some more rockets. Of course, if you run out of rockets and you don't have any heavy nearby in the moment, quick little switch to Arbalist. 42k a shot. It's not going to be as good as the rockets, but it's certainly not bad. But right there, that was our second DPS phase. You know, that that is very easy five phase territory. And if I'm more diligent about picking up rockets during that phase and not having to use Arbalist at the end of that phase, that's probably fourth phase territory if we're really good about it. But like I said, other loadouts on Arc Hunter at least, or Hunter in general, at best you're gonna get a four phase, and that's only if you play them to perfection. Loadouts like Leviathan's Breath and things of that nature. To me, a four to five phase where you don't really have to play it to perfection and it's very easy to aim the gun and there's really very little you know there's a lot of margin for error you don't really have to aim you don't you know there's very few things that can go wrong with the rocket whereas there's a lot of things that can go wrong with other loadouts so that's why i really love this D dps loadout and i think it's you know no matter what level of player you are i think leviathan's breath is awesome for players that never miss a shot but let's be real not all of us are that player i'm certainly not that player and i have 5,000 hours of destiny clocked so um, not, you know, not every player is one that can hit every shot. If you're a player that is not going to hit every single shot, run the rocket. Only risk is, oh no, what if I blow myself up on a thrall? Hit a quick jump in between each shot and you're good to go. And that's all the information I've got for solo flawless and ghosts of the deep on an arc hunter. If you have more questions, ask in the comments below. If you completed this dungeon as a result of this guide, tag me on Twitter or discord and let me know. I'll see you on the live stream. Thank you so much for watching and as always, have a great day.